So hello everyone, um, I'm Amber Phillips. I'm currently a 20 year old college student in Atlanta, Georgia. And I created a film called Culminate with my friend, Terika. And the whole purpose of the project, it was for a school's project. And my professor was just like, you can make a film about whatever you want. And being a film minor, it was the first class that allowed me to experiment with film for the first time and actually have the hands-on experience of creating the film. Um, this was during COVID, so I was at home. So there was a lot of obstacles with getting the resources that my college would have had if I was on campus, but nevertheless, it was still a eye-opening experience to have. So the purpose of the poem was to ex kind of explain the word culminate in which means achieving something at a high point after a long period of time. And the poem was written by my friend Terika and we've known each other for a really long time and always shared poems and writings of ours. And so it was just like a little project that I wanted to collab with her and kind of showcase her poem and give it the light that it needed. Um, culminate from um, the poem itself is like, with self-love, especially as Black females, um, on this journey of self-love and gaining a better connection with ourselves. Um, it's a long journey, and especially how society views Black and Brown women. It's hard to see yourself in a positive light when false representation is something that you constantly see in the media all the time. So with this film, I wanted the poem to speak for itself. I try not to like explain it too much in detail because I want to give the audience the opportunity to interpret it though. Um, it hits home with me because I can personally relate to like words of like the hellhounds, um, like those vicious, whether it's in person with what people say about me or what the media says about me being a black woman and not even knowing who I am as a person. Um, with this poem, I started off with Maya Angelou because she is someone who has helped me on my personal love journey, especially with the love of writing. Um, I've, I've always read her books, like she's phenomenal. And I wanted to emphasize the visuals of using Golden Hour. I love how Golden Hour complements Black skin, like it's unreal. So I wanted to use my friend Terika as like the model, but use this type of golden hour to highlight her features, highlight her beauty, because that's essentially what the poem is about. No, I, no and, and thank I you for sharing. Sure. Thank you for sharing. Sure. Um, there's some, there's a little bit of, um, I can hear my uh, echo. Is there any way you could turn the volume down a little bit on your end? Um, All right. All right. Is that better? Can you still hear me? Yes. Yeah. Good, good, good. Okay, great. All right. So like I was saying, I, I, I really enjoyed the film. I really enjoyed the film and I call it a film because that's exactly what it is. But it highlighted, like you said, a great point. Um, this is a little different, like I was explaining to you earlier because of, of the feature films, um, you know, that uh, 5, 10, 20, 30 minutes long, um, where there's a, you know, a plot involved and a character to get familiar with. But in this case, I think that uh, the poem, of course, um, like I was saying, was great. It was great. And I'm glad that you answered that question about, uh-oh, and we're going to have to edit that. <laughs> but I thought I turned it off. Jesus Christ. It is okay. okay. All right. It happens. And again, we, we, we edit all the time on here. So, um, but again, we're trying to keep it short. So we won't have that complication again. That's done. Um, but yeah, um, like I was saying, the, the poem, um, was, as you mentioned, was done by your friend, which was one of the questions I was going to ask you who actually created the poem. Um, I was glad that you gave her, uh, the attention she deserves for, for the, um, the actual, you know, writing of the poem. Cause that, that's great. But uh, were you the person who put the video together? I'm just curious about that. You may mention to that, but I wanted to make sure that, you know, we didn't leave anybody else out that was a part of the project. That was all you? Yes. Yeah, so Terika, okay. like she wrote the poem years ago and I ended up like finding it through like our exchanges. And other than her being the model, I was the director, the editor, the cinematographer. I basically did Great. like all the admin and like the shooting work of it. So Great. It was just great. a one girl job. <laughs> no, no, that that's great. But like I said, I want to give everybody involved 
um, as much as possible the credit they deserve. Um, even when uh, filmmakers come on with a with a large crew, you know, even if they don't name everybody involved, they give credit to their crew for their help. And and I wanted to make sure that that was the case um, with you, um, which I'm sure you you would have alluded to that eventually anyway if I didn't ask. Um, because um, like I said, I got an impression on the type of support that you have for friends and family based on um, the poem that you decided to um, communicate to everyone through your film and, and vice versa with your, your um, friend actually writing it. Um, even though you were not the writer of the poem and even though that is your friend because she's your friend, is there any any information that you can share with us about um, why you guys, besides it being a project for school, decided to go with illuminating that poem in particular, and also what what led to the way that you uh, decided to communicate the visualization behind that? Yeah, so um, it's really interesting because personally, personally with me, um, I really struggle with like getting out of my shell and like forcing myself to take my projects to life. So when I'm addressed with projects for school and my teacher gives me free range, I'm like, okay, this is going to be the time for me to make my idea an end product because I guess I sh I'm very much a perfectionist. So if I don't have all the resources available to me, I'll be like, oh, no, I won't do it, which is something I'm trying to get out of. Um, so with Culminate, I wanted to, it was my first film that I ever did. And I really, just knowing how the film was, I wanted to take that visual approach. And I know, as you're saying with filmmaking, it's really rare to see films um, without that plot or that character interaction. So I knew that was going to be an issue. So what I did to try to help me along the way to guide the poem as, because I wanted to essentially think as the poem as the plot. So there's part A and it leads to part B. And it's up to the viewer to how they feel about it. But having that poem as the plot and then the visuals as like the complementary element instead of how traditional films kind of do hand in hand. I needed to do some research. So I started with mood boards. I looked on um, YouTube and like researched and how people were able to visualize or create visual types of short films instead of looking at traditional short films. And that kind of helped me to be like, okay, I can take this approach and actually do something with it. Cause like you said, it's not really common to see a lot of visual type of short films. So um, with this film, I wanted to, while reading it, I feel like a warm feeling. And as I was going along with it, I'm like, mm, it's like summertime. Well, not really summertime. It was like early spring. And so golden hour was just, it's just immaculate around this time in my area. So I was like, okay, I get this warm feeling from this poem. I feel like energized and beautiful by it. So let me illuminate by using this natural resource. And I said before, I didn't have the resources from my college campus, I am at home. So I had to use the resources I have. I don't have a lot of professional lighting, but I can utilize the light in a way mm -hmm. to make it seem like a professional light. Right. Um, you can't really right. see in the poem, poem, I'm not poem, the film, but there are kind of like, um, like mirror or like kind of lighting mm -hmm. effects. And I basically mm -hmm. took a mirror and I just like kind of reflected it off the sun and kind of like mm -hmm. illuminated on Erica to make like this light over her. So it's just like using what I have and using resources that I have and not letting that um, accessibility get in the way of creating the film was something that I really wanted to emphasize with this film altogether. And with that in mind, that kind of led to how the film um, came to start to finish. No, that that's that's great. That that is great, and that's re that's really uh, part of the motivation behind wanting to seek you out after seeing it because I noticed how you utilize what you had as opposed to having all those different tools, and and to do it in the manner that you did took, a, 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 in my opinion, a lot of creativity. But you accomplished at least as as a as a viewer myself, I got the impression that you accomplished the goal that you were trying to reach because only you know, you know, specifically what that goal was. But I, I was really um, moved by how you did it because the means that you used to do it, even though it was simplified, it complemented the visuals. 
And it also complemented the poem because the poem was being read, you know, without a bunch of background noise and extra loud music and things like that. So it complemented. I thought you did a great job. And like I said, I, I wanted to add to that, um, you know, and, and have you on here to tell you that. And that give you, like I said, give you that opportunity to, to break everything down. But um, but the young lady who um, who um, that you use as the model. Um, did you guys work on the, the um, creativity together or I know you shot it, but were you the person who came up with the ideas and everything? I'm just curious. Uh, yes, I because wow. it is her film. And I was like, you know, you're giving me a big responsibility to bring your poem to life. She did. So right. I right. want to try to I wanted to surprise her with it. Like she didn't know. I only asked her to wear like a nice dress and that was all I provided the props and like the additional resources but I kind of just kind of like just kind of sat with myself and I was like you know I need to trust me with this process there you go and I kind of just like started with some mood boards and like Pinterest boards as like just to get my brain running on what color schemes I wanted to use and what type of backgrounds I wanted to use so it was mainly I, I, she didn't really know how it was going to turn out until the final product. And she was really, she loved it so much. She was like, you for good reason. Above and beyond. So, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's great. So w- my next question, because we were just talking about the means that you used, um, mm-hmm. h- how did you record it? I had, I had a uh, young filmmaker on here not too long ago talking about uh, how he utilized a, a phone, an iPhone. So I'm curious with the means that you were communicating that you were using, how you went about capturing that footage and showing that to us as a video? Oh, great question. Um, with this, I used several shots from my phone, but I also had a camera that I brought years ago when I was in high school. And it's a Canon um, T, uh, I think it's a T3. Like it's a okay. really early series. series. It's not like the best mm-hmm. camera, but I'm like, you know, I'm gonna use what I got. And Mm -hmm. besides using that digital camera and also my phone, it's it's a regular iPhone. um, I also used um, film, like I love film photography. So I had a couple of like Polaroids, a couple of disposable cameras and actual film camera. And there's like several shots throughout the film where I have like film photos of Terika lined up in threes. And I wanted to like use that as another medium to um, kind of emphasize the point or the aesthetic of what the poem is about. No, so like that, three main great. different tools that I use. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Well, my my next question is, um, I kind of um, wanted to know what the it was. There any, even though it was a simplistic style film, everybody has things that they come across that they don't expect that hinders them from accomplishing the task they want to accomplish while they're trying to create the film. So my next question for you is what problems arose that you did not expect at all while shooting that film? Uh, Several. Um, And I, uh, so for the first one was, I don't, like I was saying before, um, I'm not at school. So I, I don't have access to like the digital media lab that my school provides. So that has like Adobe suite, like, nice like editing software and adobe is expensive (laughs) so i don't personally have it so using i had to use like another software which is fine um but there was obstacles with like converting that and then like getting a watermark Mm -hmm. off of that so Mm -hmm. exercising and trying to get comfortable with the editing softwares that i have was one Mm -hmm. um and being comfortable with the minimal products that i had another issue is that we shot at a park and for the day that I chose it, there were so many people out there. Oh, wow. <laughs> but it was okay. Like, we were social distancing. But I'm a very shy person. So I'm like, if someone sees me doing a project, like, I'm going to feel insecure about it. But, like, honestly, I, after a while, I was I was just over it. And my friend, Terika, she's, it was awesome to do it with her because she's outgoing. And she doesn't care. And she's like, yeah, I'm a model. I'm a pose. Like, since her confidence kind of rubbed off on me, I'm just like, okay, like Good. I can do this. If she's Good. comfortable, I can be comfortable too. That was another uh, obstacle. I'm trying to think of a last one. Um, but I think those are like my two, like being comfortable in a public setting 
and not being like like staying away from people with COVID and everything and also the accessibility of resources because I don't know if a lot of other filmmakers are like this but with me being a perfectionist it gets in the way of me actually being creative and actually like mm -hmm. doing my films so Absolutely. that's a, another op like more of a mental obstacle that I struggled especially with this being one of the first films that I ever did but it was really those challenges actually taught me a lot so even though it was difficult in the moment I can look back on it and be like okay like it wasn't as bad as I thought you know like I can do this again with the information or lessons that I learned from last time that that's a perfect segue to my to my next um question because you know you mentioned um that this was your first film and then you also mentioned how this was a learning experience for you so my question was going to be and is what are your plans for another project and how do you plan on um uh accomplishing that goal like what what, what is your agenda behind your next project or do you even have plans for another project because i'm yes. just assuming right now because you did such a great job I, but do you even have plans yes yeah, so um this was for a school project, which, you know, I feel, I do feel some type of way about it, but I'm like, this made me create the project. So I'm proud about it. I do have some other films in mind. I'm just exploring which other um, formats or avenues I can take. Um, I'm still at home and it's summertime. So I have a lot of free time. I'm currently working on a few scripts myself. And I feel like in this time period, I'm just trying to figure out um, if I should maybe make a YouTube channel and post them or maybe stick to like having it more accessible since my present on Instagram is high compared to my other platforms. So gotcha. yes, I do have other projects in mind. I'm Good. experimenting with different mediums and actually like forming a plot with my films in the future. It's just Good. the planning and that, you know, getting out of that perfectionist mindset. Um, I'm realizing that I can't, really call myself a creative if I'm not actively challenging myself with creative uh, projects and film is one of them and with my film minor um I have no excuse to not say I don't have the resources because they're all within me regardless and google is free so that's another one. that's true <laughs> that's true no that's absolutely true and the fact that you see um I guess the you trying to be a perfectionist in, in all aspects of the filmmaking process as being a hindrance, the fact that you have that insight, I, I don't see anything but great things coming from you because it's almost it's almost like, you know, what most people would have to tell people like yourself with those challenges, you know, you've already, you, you, you've owned it. You've owned it and you're working on ways to over, you know, overcome that so you can do better. And, and that's, that's great, that's great. Um, do you have, with the experience that you have with the film that you created, with what you've learned, are you in, you, you said you're in film school right now, right? Not going, but in right now. Yes. Okay. So what, what, with what you got, with what you got, I'm sorry, I got some time, uh, from your filmmaking classes and with the film that you created, what words of advice would you give someone else who wants to create a film but has no clue how to get started or knows how to get started? but is a little nervous about it, maybe paranoid or having that same mentality of perfectionism that, you know, I can't do this the way that I want. So there's no need for me to even try. Based off what you learned, what would you tell them? Oh, I got several. Um, yeah. One, I understand where your fear is coming from, whether it's because you don't know where to start or you are scared about how other people will feel about your film or how what other people will say. My opinion is trust your gut. Um, YouTube or even you can watch as many YouTube videos research as much as you can but if you're not like digging into yourself and like okay I need to shoot this and when I shoot this then I can edit this or if I can write this script then I can go on to the next step so finding that confidence and like you know what I'm going to do this um finding an accountability buddy would be great to help you get out of that funk um so someone can hold you accountable like hey how's this film going and to be on your behind <laughs> i can't say that other word but be on your behind <laughs> about you making a film i have so many film ideas but they have died because i i didn't hold myself accountable so mm. having that accountability buddy would be great 
Um, my last tip was, you know, you don't have to, I have the privilege of being in school and being able to go to a university that has these resources or has an education program for me. It's not the best, but it's something. So I wouldn't want to hold that limitation on anyone because I definitely had that idea even prior to college, like, oh, I'm gonna go to school in university and I'm gonna take classes about film and then I can be qualified to make films, which is not true. You can make a film without any education or requirements. So don't let the education or that idea of like, oh, you need to do this or I need to have this degree hold you back. There are resources online that are free that I highly recommend people to use. And honestly, they're kind of even better than college classes. So I will, so those are the top three, having that accountability buddy, um, not limiting yourself to a degree or a program, and also just having that confidence in like, okay, I'm going to really make my dream a reality. And because you never know until you start. Perfect, perfect. Great words of encouragement. Great insight, Amber. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. I enjoyed talking to you. Please note that whenever you decide to create your next project, you have a platform. Okay, you can feel free to share it with me. Send me a message. Let me know that you got it going, and I will definitely, you know, get it on the, the platform as soon as possible for everybody to enjoy. Let them know where it came from and who did it with with the quickness um as quick as i can as, as soon as i can I'll, I'll definitely put it up um but like i said um we'll we'll be following you to see what else you got going on and i'm definitely um hoping that this um motivates people to go and watch your film culmination i really do um for those who haven't seen it go watch it for those who've watched it now you know <laughs> now you know where it came from okay so with that being said do you want to um do you any 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 uh, shout outs or any anything you want to say to anybody involved who may have encouraged you to do it? I mean, if not, it's fine. I just want to, like I say, give you your time. Of give you your course. time. Oh, of course, I got to give a huge shout out to my friend, Terika. Um, we're like sisters oh, at this point. We've known each other since middle school, which is a really long time. So, <laughs> yeah, she's an illustrator. She's a, a up and coming actress. So I highly recommend you check her out. Her Instagram is Terika Lachey. You can even find her on my Instagram. I have her tagged in the film. Uh, my Instagram is at Jam with Am. And you if go. you follow me, keep on the lookout for. Um, I'm working on a blog. I'm working on my YouTube channel. I'm refining it, and I'm just really using this summer to experiment and challenge myself with my creative um, projects. So. Follow me on there to get updates on when those get live. And also follow Good Good Films. What are you doing? Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is uh this is the part where I tell you thank you again, okay? And um we're we're going to we're we're going to look forward. We're gonna look at look to see what you have coming up next, okay? Because I'm I'm uh, really looking forward to it myself.